Hi, uh, my name is Barbara Ostrowska and uh, I am a first and foremost a teacher and a psychologist. Uh, and I work with uh, Think Foundation as well on this project. Uh, however, as I said, my main occupation is being a psychology teacher and theory of knowledge teacher in, uh, in a school in Lublin, Poland, which is southeast. Um, and as Bart said, uh, I am going to present uh, a more theoretical uh, background to active learning. However, I hope to, uh, to introduce some of the examples as well. So hopefully it will be helpful for you as teachers um, as well. So um, let's start. Um, uh, you probably are all familiar with the cone of learning, uh, which is attributed to Edgar Dale, um, which uh, starts to, uh, to define active learning as um, the most effective way of, of learning uh, related to uh, learning outcomes like analysis, like creation, like um, defining or evaluation. And of course, uh, this learning cone uh, might be traced back to the times of, of Confucius, who said that I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, and I do and I understand. Um, in general, active learning is a form uh, of learning in which students are engaged and involved in the learning process, and it is uh, usually thought as an alternative to a traditional uh, frontal transmission, transmission of knowledge. And it can range from uh, self-directed learning where students themselves are in control of their learning process and all the decisions and uh, goals that they would like to, um, to achieve, uh, as well as the activities. Uh, but it can also take a form of independent learning with uh, goals and activities designed by the teachers and uh, the control given to the students to actively pursue them uh, by using their higher old order thinking skills, meta metacognitive skills, uh, reflection, and uh, making decisions on the way um, as they um, go through the activities, uh, and of course, working uh, in a group as well. And uh, during active learning, teachers emphasize the development of the skills more than, uh, than they uh, want to transmit uh, the knowledge. Uh, whereas the students are active, act, uh, active and engaged actors um, and taking ownership of the learning process. And they play the most prominent role. Uh, and students are doing something, they are thinking about what they are doing and reflecting on that. And because of that, they are learning. Uh, active learning requires students to think hard, think creatively, and to practice using uh, new knowledge and new skills uh, to develop long-term recall and deeper understanding. And I think this is the most important thing when it comes to, uh, to active learning. Uh, it engages students in, uh, in reflection, in writing, in talking, in discussing about what they are learning and uh, it makes the knowledge stick with them. It, is, um, it creates a, a more long-lasting and um, better understanding of, of the knowledge. Uh, and of course, there are many theories related to active learning, among other, uh, of course, the constructivism, uh, but also things like scaffolding, like Bloom's tax um, taxonomy, uh, which you could see links to the cone of learning at the very beginning, uh, things like inquiry-based and problem-based or uh, experiential learning, so many different theories that we might connect to, to active learning. They're, they are all great examples of that. And uh, I think that uh, a very short introduction to, to constructivism is also important here. So um, basically, constructivism states that uh, active learning is a process of creating meaning, and new learning occurs when students make uh, connections to their existing concepts, knowledge, and experience. So it, it's, 
it does not happen in a vacuum. Uh, the uh, students are not blank slates. Uh, they have their emotions, they have their previous knowledge, they have previous experiences, and they create knowledge based on or in relation to these, um, these experiences and um, this knowledge. And uh, they construct new meanings. So they, if we can imagine it as a wall, they build up on the bricks, on the, on the previous layers to add to, to that body of knowledge. Uh, and of course, some of the uh, principles of constructivism uh, is that uh, knowledge is constructed uh, actively rather than passively absorbed. So we need to make an effort, active effort, to, to construct this, not that knowledge. Uh, learning is um, an active process, meaning uh, that it is not the role of teachers to put the knowledge into the heads of um, of students, but rather uh, the students need to uh, actively construct the thing. Uh, it also says that knowledge is socially constructed. That's why so many active uh, learning takes place in groups, takes place in a social context where students need to communicate to each other, uh, when they need to uh, make that meaning through the interaction with, uh, with other students and with the teacher. And uh, what, what might sound as a contradiction is that uh, um, knowledge is also personal. So each individual learner has a dis distinctive perspective, distinctive point of view uh, based on this existing knowledge. And uh, the knowledge of each student will differ. But um, having the understanding, having the, um, the um, insight into different perspectives uh, might actually give us a deeper understanding of the knowledge that we are constructing. And uh, this all uh, links as well to the student-centered approach, uh, which can be defined by, uh, by five um, key uh, changes to the practice. And with the active learning, it is essential that we change the role of the teacher. The teacher, as I said, is no longer in the front talking to the students and transmitting the knowledge, trying to fill their heads with the knowledge because it doesn't really work. It doesn't create a deeper understanding. With active learning, teacher, teacher's role is to moderate, to be a facilitator of learning, be uh, a friend in that learning, being on the same level with the student, and no longer a sole uh, source of knowledge. So that's why it needs the, the approach to learning needs to change from the frontal transmission, from a teacher-centered approach to a student-centered approach. And to do that, uh, there needs to be a different balance of power. Uh, so basically, the teacher needs to uh, give control over to the students. And this is uh, sometimes a very big obstacle for the teachers who are um, used to uh, working in a lecture style when, when they are used to uh, transmitting that knowledge and um, working in a traditional environment, even with the setup of the classroom where the um, desks are screwed to the floor sometimes. Uh, and you cannot really move them. And giving the power, redistributing the power to the students is essential when it comes to active learning. So students are in the center of the process. Uh, they need to uh, start being in charge of their learning. It also means responsibility uh, for their learning, uh, taking that responsibility for themselves. Uh, the second key change is the function of content. So I already said that uh, the skills are more important than the knowledge itself, but also with uh, following the constructivist approach, uh, learners actively construct their knowledge by uh, making meaning to the previously acquired knowledge. So this links nicely to, uh, to the constructivism. Uh, the role of teacher being um, 
a facilitator, not the only so source of expertise. Um, the responsibility of learning being uh, put to the students and students, uh, student agencies, uh, very important here. This is a very, um, uh, very trendy word right now. Uh, but having that ownership, uh, being autonomous and self-regulated as a learner, be, being in charge of the learning, taking responsibility for that, this is all very important in active learning. But it also is important because it builds resilience, it builds grit, uh, it um, contributes to the growth mindset, so to the development of the student as a whole. Um, and last but not least, um, and I didn't didn't say much about it yet, is um, the role of the evaluation uh, and uh, the process that we go through, which is uh, very important. And uh, for um, the active learning to be effective, uh, the teacher needs to implement assessment for learning and assessment as learning. So not only the grades, uh, as measured by the number, uh, but also um, effective formative uh, assessment strategies to support students as learners. And uh, I think this is a very important part of that active learning process. Without uh, the evaluation uh, from the teacher, but also uh, peer assessment or self-reflection, uh, active learning would not be as effective uh, as it could be. And of course, uh, the benefits of active learning, um, of, there are many, there are plenty. Uh, it builds both knowledge and understanding, which students can then apply to new contexts to solve new problems. It fosters students' learning and their autonomy. Um, it uh, develops the skills that we would like the students to develop, so-called future uh, skills. It helps to develop uh, thinking skills, metacognitive skills, reflection, which I think is one of the most important skills uh, in the 21st century. Uh, it usually involves collaboration, although we also might have active learning that happens um, in, in the individual form. Uh, and very often, it doesn't require any additional cost. It can be done in any classroom. It's uh, mainly the change of mindset of the teacher. And um, the active learning activities, to be effective, uh, they must make sense to the students. So the students need to, un need to understand why they're doing certain things and uh, what is it for, what are the goals. Uh, the, the objective, the learning goals, need to be in front, um, need to be uh, firstly um, given to the students so that uh, they can make sense of what they are doing. And second of all, it must include the development of uh, communication, of teamwork, of, of creativity, by utilizing all the, uh, the higher uh, order thinking skills. And with the examples of active learning, of course, uh, the most often used, and I think that uh, I cannot find a teacher who does not use them in the classroom, is working with uh, other students uh, on the a project. It can be a small uh, subject-specific project. It can be uh, a bigger project, uh, interdisciplinary one. It can be a whole school project. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, right now, um, apart from this project, Navigado, uh, we also, even in the distance learning, we have uh, some project that project that students can collaborate on uh, using different um, tools, uh, ICT tools, uh, for example, investigating what does it mean to be happy in uh, during the, uh, the time of, of a pandemic. So um, there are many different, different projects that you can uh, do with the students right now. Uh, but active learning does not have to be very big. It might be uh, something small, like uh, making a presentation that shows your understanding, shows the student's understanding of a certain topic based on some reading that they have undertaken before. 
or creating a podcast or a screencast or a video that, that summarizes what they've learned, what are the most important aspects of a certain topic. It might also be peer tutoring or, uh, or small group work uh, where students are going to share with each other uh, what are the key elements of um, of uh, the content that they are uh, going through. When they, for example, explain themselves how to solve an equation in, ma in mathematics. Uh, so it doesn't have to be uh, very big, but it is the student's role to, uh, to be active in that process. And I thought that I would include uh, two of my uh, favorite methods for active learning. Uh, the first one is uh, discussions, and uh, there is a very good post that is hidden under the first QR code. Uh, it is a, a post by um, Cult of Pedagogy, which is a podcast, uh, but um, Jennifer, who is hosting that podcast, uh, lists, I think, 17 different discussion protocols that you can use uh, in the classroom to make your classroom more active. And the second example would be uh, utilizing thinking routines. Uh, I don't know if you if you heard about Harvard Project Zero, which is one of my absolute favorites. They have created a whole list of different thinking routines that are aimed uh, at different uh, things, and you can use them uh, at every lesson, uh, also in, in distance learning. And uh, there are plenty of resources on their website, and you can uh, simply go there and, and have a look. Uh, there are videos, uh, there are explanations of how it works. And uh, it might be something that you can embed in any of, um, of the lessons. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to end with uh, with uh, uh, learning zones of the future classroom, which I think nicely, uh, hopefully nicely will link to what um, Xavier will talk about. So uh, to be active, students need to investigate, so be active researcher. Students need to create. Uh, they need to be, uh, need to create content, need to engage in creative, um, Reimagination of the content. They can present uh, their product. They can give and get feedback. They can interact uh, with each other, but also with the teacher. Uh, they can collaborate, exchange, develop their communication. And finally, they can uh, develop. And uh, the active learning environment promotes informal learning, independent and self-regulated learning, which I think is uh, essential uh, in today's world. Thank you.